Are you ready to get more visibility in your business? When you have more visibility and you influence others, that equals great profits for your business. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm Cindy J, the Visibility Wiz, and welcome to this episode of Biz Success in 15. Today, I'll be going over several steps for you to get visibility. It's your roadmap to visibility. So step number one is to decide. Decide that you are going to be visible. Decide that you're going to be consistent. Decision is such an important thing. You may have heard before uh, the difference between decide and interested. Whenever you've truly decided to do something, you start planning, you start envisioning what it's going to look like. For example, if you ever decided to get married, you automatically start planning your wedding and what you're going to need and what band you want to play and who your photographer is. There's all these things. But so many people, they go there, oh, I'm going to get more visibility. I'm going to start a business, but they don't do nothing. They take no action. So that is not a decision. That is simply, hey, I'm interested. I'm interested in getting more visibility. I'm interested in building a business. But without action, decision isn't really a decision. Uh, Jim Palmer wrote a book called Decide. And he says so many people are in Squishyville. And Squishyville is really whenever you haven't completely committed to your decision. You're like, yes, I want it. But you haven't committed to the decision. So when you decide, you've committed. And you need to start planning. So the first step to your roadmap to visibility is to decide and to really decide that you are going to have more visibility, that you're going to have more influence. The second step is to identify your ideal client. And you might be thinking, yeah, 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 I've heard it. I've seen it. I know who my ideal client is. But do you really? What is your ideal client's hobbies? What's their personality like? How much income do they make? What's their favorite things? What type of things really disturb them that they don't like? Your ideal client is not your demographic avatar. Your demographic avatar tells you it's a man or a woman, this age, maybe they work in this industry, but that's not your ideal client. Your ideal client is somebody who is hardwired to want to work with you. Your ideal client has the specific set of characteristics and personality traits that make the two of you get attached to each other. So identify your ideal client. What do you love about them? What are their dreams, their desires? What are their challenges? What do they wake up at three o'clock in the morning for? What is it that they want? What is their personality? Do they have a sense of humor? Do they like facts and nothing but facts? Do they like to listen more than they like to talk? Or do they like to talk more than they like to listen? Are they action takers? Are they lifelong learners? You know, the basic thing that everybody's ideal client should have in common is that they have the ability to pay for your services and products. But really get down and really narrow down your ideal client as much as you can, just as much as you would if you was envisioning your perfect partner. If you've ever been on a dating website, you know, and you have to sit there and you sort of say, what type of person are you looking for? You wouldn't just say, oh, every man out there is perfect for me or every woman out there is perfect for me. And just like that, your ideal client, every person in the world is not your ideal client. We all are attracted to some people, not attracted to other people. We all like people. We all dislike people. So you have to know who your ideal client is. 
besides knowing their characteristics and their traits and what it is they want, you also need to dig a little bit deeper by asking yourself, what is it that they like about me? Do they like that I tell stories? Do they like my fun personality? Do they like that I'm intuitive? Do they like like the fact that I'm down to earth? Do they like the fact that I share my uh, mistakes whenever I make them? What is it about you? I, this is such a core piece that so many people skip. They They create their demographic avatar, but they don't dig deep to see who their ideal client is. After you write all this down, then I challenge you to sit down and get some colored pencils and draw a picture of your ideal client. When you draw pictures of your ideal clients, things might come out that you never, ever would have thought of. When I drew my ideal client, I drew a huge heart on her chest. And I thought, wow, my ideal client has a big heart. And some of my dearest friends and colleagues said, well, duh, you have a big heart, Cindy. So naturally you want your clients to have a big heart. But I have never logically in my conscious mind thought of that. So whenever you draw the picture, things can come out. Things can come out about uh, also something else with me is that they like nature. They like wildlife. I am so drawn to nature and wildlife. And, and my ideal clients also a lot of times like the sereneness, the beauty, the magic of our universe and what it looks like in uh, nature and wildlife and all that. Okay. So step one, decide. Step two, identify your ideal client. Step three is to brainstorm your ideal client's needs, desires, wants, their fears, their challenges. What is it that you are helping them with? Um, and don't start with what you're helping with. Start with what their needs, their challenges, their fears, their desires, their dreams. Start with that and brainstorm it. Come up with as many items as you can. Now that you know what their challenges and their fears are and their desires, now you can create an opt-in gift. You need an opt-in gift based on your client's biggest challenges. It can be a little one-page infographic, or it can be one page with five steps on it. It could be two or three pages with three steps and a little bit of information on both. It could be a five-minute video or a five-minute audio. The It really doesn't matter. You want to keep it short and you want to keep it simple and something they gravitate to. I personally like infographics and PDFs because then people can print it out and they can hang it up on their desk, which is going to keep me top of mind. So if you want to stay top of mind, you may want to, instead of starting with a video or audio, start with a simple infographic or PDF where you have your contact information at the bottom of it. So when people do print it out, you stay top of mind. And the more they see this, the more they will know, like, and trust you, even though they may not have done other stuff yet, whenever they have it sitting on their desk or on their bulletin board, you stay top of mind. Um, and so with an opt-in gift, you want to create something like the three biggest myths or the three secrets or the number one secret or the number one myth or why most, you know, or why you may not be able to do this, right? So you're digging into their fears and you're giving them a solution, their fears and their challenges. But don't know that you can't give them all the information. You want to give them a couple simple steps or tips that are going to help them solve one problem, one problem only. So step one, decide. Step two, identify your ideal client. Step three, brainstorm your client's needs and wants. Step four, create an opt-in gift. Number five, you can actually do steps one through four, you know, maybe in a day, you know, in a weekend, you could actually go through all these steps and, uh, and be ready to start seeing more massive visibility. Step five is write and schedule your autoresponders. So once somebody opts into your gift, you want to send them some autoresponders to help them build the no like and trust factor. 
you can have you know as few as a few different autoresponders that follow up from after you give them their gift or you could have more things that i believe should be included in your follow up is you send them the first email where they download the gift a couple of days later you send them a second email and say hey did you download the gift did you have any questions is there anything else that i can help you with and if you want to you can even send them another gift maybe you created an a video about their biggest challenge that aligns with the PDF that you just sent them. So now you can send them that video that goes along with it to deepen their change, to deepen their transformation, their knowledge. The third thing you want to send in, it doesn't need to be in this order, but the third thing is you want to tell them about you, but you're not telling them your resume. Remember, the email is about them. So you're saying, hey, this is my story and this is what I went through and this was my transformation and this is why I can help you. So for instance, if you're anything like me, uh, you may have lacked confidence. And even though you knew all the right strategies or you knew what strategies to succeed, you lacked the confidence to follow through with these strategies. So you were not getting the results that you wanted. You know, I completely understand because I was there and this is what I did to build my confidence up to where I would actually follow through with these strategies, which helped me build my six figure business. And this is truly one of my stories. OK, so I'm telling you about me, but I'm also talking to you because I'm going along with how it is I can help you. Another thing you should have in your autoresponder is a client testimonial, but share it as a story. You know, my client, Karen, you could be a lot like my client, Karen. When Karen first came to me, she was so discouraged. She was so down on herself. She really wanted to have a successful business, but she was doubting that she could ever do that. You see, Karen had just been out of, uh, had been a life coach for six months. And her first mentor told her that the only way to succeed is through Facebook ads. So in the first six months of her coaching business, she spent $8,000 in Facebook ads. She only added 500 people to her list and she had zero clients. You talk about being discouraged. So when the first thing I had Karen do when we started working together was stop the Facebook ads. You can have massive visibility and massive success without spending a ton of money on advertising. I spend very little money on advertising. Everything I do just about is organic. And within a couple of months of working with me, Karen had built her list to over 2,000 people. She had three high paying clients with the lowest being $5,000. And she did this all without spending any money on ads. See, client testimonial. Again, you're connecting to your ideal client. And then you want to have a main objective to your autoresponder sequence. Do you want them to schedule a strategy call with you? Do you want them to go to a webinar? Do you want them to buy a low-end product? What is it that you want them to do? And in all of the emails, you have a PS. Hey, PS, if you're ready to go further, you can download, you know, you can purchase my product for only $47 or something like that, right? This is what you're doing for your autoresponders. So step one, decide. Step two, identify your ideal client. Step three, brainstorm your client's needs and wants. Step four, Create an opt-in gift based on your client's biggest needs. Step five, write and schedule your autoresponders. Now, the beauty of this is, is that you never have to do these five steps again. You know, you could periodically want to go back and, and brainstorm their needs and wants, but those five, once you've done it, you can go with this for years and years and years and years. I created a $5,000, a $5,000, a 5,000 person email list just from utilizing these first five steps. So, and I just used one opt-in gift over and over and over again and got 5,000 leads on my email list. So step six, choose three and only three platforms to uh, do. And you might even wanna say strategies. You don't wanna to try to be everywhere. 
And really and truly, if you're brand, brand, brand new, you may only want to choose one strategy. Um, I like Facebook, but some people like LinkedIn, some people like Instagram. You have all these strategies that you can utilize. So choose a strategy. In my program, Get Clients Online 24-7, I show people how to choose the right strategies that align with their strengths, their personal beliefs, and their values. This is how they, my clients create fun and profitable businesses for themselves, one that will sustain the type of lifestyle that they want. So step number seven, this is really whenever you're getting into more of the visibility, you're going to write an article of five to 700 words. If you have a blog, post it on your blog. But out of that five to 700 word article, ask yourself, how can I change the name of it? What questions does this answer? What uh, quotes are in here that are nuggets for my clients? Now you can create out of a five to 700 word article, you can create up to 100 or more social media posts. You can create little mini Instagram reels. You can create mini videos. You can create longer videos. The list is limitless on what you can do with just one article. So you want that article to have a good call to action, maybe for a strategy session, maybe to a, uh, attend a webinar of yours or to purchase a low end product. Now, with all these social media posts that you're posting, you're linking it back to your article that has that really good, strong call to action. Uh, and you could do, like I said, little videos. You could do a live, uh, Facebook Live or Instagram Live or LinkedIn Live or any live um, and share this with you. And then the next step is you are repurposing the content. I just talked about this. And then Listen for valuable feedback from your audience. Listen to what they say. Listen to what they want. You know, do they do, are they asking you a question that wasn't answered in the original article? So now you can rinse and repeat steps seven through nine and keep doing this. You create 10 to 20 different articles with really good call to actions and you create social media posts go with this. This can give you massive visibility that you can just continue. Once you end it, you start it over again. You can create two, three hundred, two or three hundred different social media posts and just keep rotating them over and over and over again. Because nobody remembers what they read three months ago or six months ago. And everybody's at a different place. And when they see it again, they are going to learn more. It's going to touch them in a different way. So uh, real quick, I'm going to go through all the steps again. Step one, decide. Step two, identify your ideal client. Step three, brainstorm your client's needs and wants. Step four, create an opt-in gift based on your client's biggest challenges or fears. Step five, write and schedule your autoresponders. Step six, choose one to three strategies or platforms to start being visible on. Step seven, write an article of five to 700 words. Step eight, create as many different little mini contents for social media that you can out of that one article. Step nine, listen for feedback. Listen to what your clients are saying. What did they like? What did they not like? What do they feel was missing? What questions did they have? And step 10 is to uh, rinse and repeat steps seven through nine. If you do this once a week or even once a month, you're going to start to see more visibility. People are going to start seeing you as an, an influencer and your profits will increase. So I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I hope you tune back in again next week for another episode of Biz Success in 15. Uh, I ask that you go to visibilitychecklist.com and download your own nine-step visibility checklist. Have a great day. Big hugs. Bye-bye.